We're very excited to have our, our guests this afternoon for our lunch plenary to talk about rapid scale up of home visiting in other countries. Um, it's just been a really delightful process to work with this team to learn a little bit more about their work. Obviously, they're going to share that with us today. I will not be introducing them, but I will introduce John Korfmacher, who will be moderating this session. Um, and just, for the, just so that you know, there will be time for questions and answers with this plenary. You can either use the live mics at the end, or you can use your app. If you were listening to me earlier um, and have your app downloaded, you're certainly really welcome to ask questions via the app as well. So we'll get started. Um, we're really excited to have the, the plenary um, titled Home Visiting Workforce Development During Rapid Scale-Up, Lessons from Other Countries. Dr. John Korfmacher, who I said will be moderating this session, is an associate professor at the Erickson Institute in Chicago. His research examines early childhood interventions, parent engagement in early childhood services, and quality assessment with an emphasis on workforce training and development. He has worked on numerous research trials focused on home visiting programs as well as other early childhood interventions. Dr. Korfmacher, that's the only time I'm going to <laughs> is a member of the management team of the Home Visiting Applied Research Collaborative, or HARC, which many of us attended yesterday, a national network funded by the Health Resources and Services Administration. John also consults on research and evaluation of early childhood services nationally and abroad. So let's welcome John. Hello. Um, many, uh, last week, uh, many of us uh, received a message from Zero to Three that Ron Lally, one of the organization's last surviving original founders, passed away. And if you know of Ron Lally and his work, you know that we lost a true champion of infants and toddlers and someone who led the charge for providing support to them and their families, including through home visits and the birth of Early Head Start. But if you do not know Ron Lally, then you are not alone. Many people in home visiting have not heard of him or read any of his work or knew of his importance. And why is that? Probably because Ron Lally is known more for, he's, no, he's more known in early education circles than public health circles or social work or family life or nursing or pediatrics or child welfare circles. Home visiting lies at the intersection of so many different professional fields that do not always interact well or communicate with each other. It's like, um, it's like home visiting has many houses that it feels obligated to visit during the holidays. <laughs> to use a, um, a slightly awkward metaphor that I should have workshopped a bit more before saying it out loud for the first time here. But we can be the solution to this problem. Because if there is one thing that we should take away from this meeting, it is this. Home visiting is about relationships between the parent and the child, between the home visitor and the family, and beyond. And relationships are important. It is about relationships at all levels. We can show everybody that the sandbox is big enough for us to play in and to play together. And I just realized that I, uh, from holiday visits to sandboxes, I've introduced two tortured metaphors <laughs> into this one brief intro. So let's see what other ones I can throw in there. We can be a tree with multiple branches that support the nests of many birds. We are a building with many wings, uh, sometimes with poor signage in the hallways. Um, we're a zoo with a menagerie of animals, um, a garden with rows and rows of varied fruits and vegetables. Um, we are a story from the Marvel Cinematic Universe 
with the heroes all having superpowers but coming together at the last minute to save humanity. Um, we are a hotel with many different conference rooms, a banquet hall with lots of ta I'm just like telling you what I'm looking at right now. So we are a globe with many different countries of professionals. I nailed it. I brought us back to our talk right now. Um, so why am I here talking about relationships and working together? This is the third year in a row that the ounce has devoted a plenary to international efforts in home visiting, and I hope it is not the last. Because part of relationship building in these times is reaching out across our borders and connecting and learning from others, doing much of the same thing in other parts of the world. In my experience, interacting with home visiting programs in different countries, I've learned that despite our differences, there are many, many things that we have in common, both in terms of potential and in terms of challenges. And one of the great challenges that I've heard over and over is workforce development. Because we live at this weird intersection of so many different professions, my notes have decided to just stop on me right at the second, so we'll see if Microsoft is actually uh, creating an update for me. <laughs> the area's workforce is incredibly important. So, oh, here we go. I'm going to tell you what my pin is right now. This is incredibly awkward. <laughs> so we can do this. One of the things is because we are dealing with so many different um, professions that are working together, workforce development is really important. And I think some of the questions that we are asking ourselves and we see in other places besides just in the US is who are the home visitors? What do they bring with them? What do they need? How do we support them? So where do we find these home visitors? How do we train these home visitors to do the job they have to do? And how do we support them in their ongoing work? I uh, have this nice little globe because I want to emphasize that there are two countries that we are going to be li uh, listening to and hearing the stories from. And they just, on this figure, they just happen to be on the same part of this globe. Pretty clever, huh? OK, I'm trying this once more. No, oh, I think it actually worked. I do want to, before I introduce our speakers, I do want to um, talk about uh, just a few recent initiatives. One is we are, um, I want to draw your attention to a couple of resources focused on this issue. Can you tell you I got my, I just got my notes back. Can you tell how much more confident I feel right now. One is a, uh, one of them is a recent special issue of uh, the New York Academy of Sciences that's focused on the implementation of global early childhood development efforts, of which workforce is a primary consideration. All of these articles are open access and they can be downloaded free of charge. So I recommend that you seek that one out. The second uh, initiative that I think is really important is uh, the Global Early Childhood Workforce Initiative, which is sponsored by the International Step-by-Step -Step Association, which, as its name suggests, uh, examines um, supports for building and improving the early childhood workforce across multiple sectors. And one of the projects that I've been so happy to be uh, connected to is the um, needs assessment tool for, uh, that's focused specifically on home visiting. And it outlines what a community or a region or a country has to figure out if it's serious about building an infrastructure of home visitors to do their job. And the links are here, and you're welcome to check them out. Um, 
Home visiting is hard work. You don't need me to tell you this. So whether you're doing it in Los Angeles or doing it in rural Kentucky, a favela in Sao Paulo, a remote province in China, or a tiny village in Kazakhstan, and as home visiting can, can, continues to be uh, seen as a linchpin in early childhood services, this need to understand workforce development just grows and grows. Um, so we are lucky here uh, to hear from three people who are going to present different approaches to working on our workforce challenges, and they will highlight the experiences of Brazil, China, and the United States. First up is Mary Young. Dr. Young is a pediatrician and a specialist in global health and child development with broad experience in both developed and developing countries. For three decades, she has worked at the World Bank, guiding efforts in international public health and child health and development, and she was absolutely instrumental in putting early childhood development on the radar of world leaders and policymakers. Currently, she's the technical director of the Center for Child Development at the China Development Research Foundation. She's also the senior advisor to Harvard University's Center on the Developing Child, and she's a special advisor to Brazil's Criança Feliz program. After Mary, we will hear from Ili Harasawa. Ms. Harasawa holds a degree in psychology from the University of Sao Paulo and a specialization in child development from Niigata University in Japan. She has been working in the child development area for more than 15 years, providing management and consulting services for public and private institutions and foundations. She has had a, a very significant role in spreading the importance of public investment in early childhood in Brazil, as well as globally through her foundation work. And in July 2018, she took over the National Secretariat for the Promotion of Human Development at the Ministry of Citizenship in the Brazilian federal government and is now responsible for coordinating the Criança Feliz, or the Happy Child program, which she will talk about today. And then finally, we will hear from someone who most of you know by now, and if you don't, shame on you. <laughs> Lori Rogman is a professor of human development at Utah State University. Dr. Rogman focuses her research on how parents support their child's early development and how effective home visiting practices promote developmental parenting. Her work extends to several national and international home visiting models and programs. She is the lead author of Developmental Parenting, uh, the Piccolo Observation Measures of Parent-Child Interaction, and the Home Visiting Rating Scales. Maybe you've heard of at least one of those. <laughs> Dr. Rogman is representing CUPID, the higher education consortium focused on applied infant toddler, toddler pedagogy. So please uh, join me in welcoming Mary Young, Ili Harasawa, and Lori Rogman, and we'll start with Dr. Young. John for the introduction and it's really a great pleasure to be here. Um, thank you Kelly for inviting me and indeed this morning Diane mentioned this is the best party in town. <laughs> Certainly it is like a family gathering and uh, I've been looking forward to this every year for the past three years so I really appreciate being, uh, being here. Um, we now have substantial information and data showing that programs which um, promote young children's uh, healthy growth and development um, are the best investment in human capital for economic growth. All types of programs, uh, home visiting, uh, uh, group sessions, um, uh, center-based intervention have been shown to be effective. The median benefit cost uh, ratio um, cited in the 2016 Lancet, uh, only child development uh, interventions show that eight it is 18 to 1 for, uh, for reducing stunt, uh, stunting, 4 to 1 for, uh, in, for preschool education, and 3 to 1 for home visits for children with significant language delay. So in contrast, costs of inaction um, are large. Um, at society level, at societal level, costs of inaction for not improving stunting and not addressing developmental delays uh, through preschool and home visits is several times more than what uh, uh, countries currently expend on health and education, respectively. Um, the Lancet series uh, over the past um, uh, ten, uh, 10 plus years um, highlighted nurturing care as a framework for early interventions. Many countries are now studying the impact of home visiting programs and are testing home visiting models to come to, uh, to convince their respective policymakers to take action to invest in children at zero to three. 
So I'd like to share uh, the, the experiences of two countries, China and Brazil, that are taking home visiting interventions with different approaches to scale. Uh, in contrasting these two approaches, uh, we examine the important questions for home visitors, uh, training and support, and we, as well as the challenges in developing large-scale home visiting programs. China is experimenting with the replication, uh, replication of Jamaica's uh, Reach Up program, uh, which um, I recall was presented here two years ago. And in building um, evidence base uh, on the benefit of home visiting interventions to improve child outcomes. Their objective is to be able to leverage national policy to fund ECD programs. Brazil launched a national home visiting program, uh, Criança Feliz, which is a happy child uh, program, in October 2016, uh, following shortly after the legal framework of ECD uh, in March 2016. So China, um, in, started in 2015 uh, uh, by uh, it was a program that it was a project that was uh, implemented by the China Development Research Foundation CDRF. Um, it started the first RCT uh, in home visiting uh, in one county in Huachi, which um, um, I'm not sure if I can show you is number one there, the tiny uh, uh, spot there. Um, actually, uh, John also visited, um, and then since over the the past three years, by end of 2019, it has replicated in 10 counties in nine provinces, uh, all piloting home visiting program. So the total number um, uh, of children are, uh, served now uh, is about 8,500. 8, the initial funding came from the UBS Foundation to conduct an RCT uh, of a parenting nutrition intervention modeled after the Jamaica uh, uh, study, which had a 21-year um, follow-up, showed that you know, it was highly effective in, in uh, improving children's development. Um, now this program is a project, I mean, this uh, study is known, uh, known as uh, Reach Up. So since then, the funding has come from, this is the China experiment, experiments from national and international donors. Each county site um, it ha it has an intervention and um, control group drawn from a subsample of townships and villages. Um, the selection of the counties, however, uh, is not completely random. It's very much based, uh, they all draw from China's um, 800 poverty uh, counties, national designated poverty counties, but their selection, uh, depending on donors', uh, donors preference, to choice, and on political readiness and support. Um, as in the Jamaica model, China, uh, China Reach, uh, which is short for uh, Reach uh, Rural Education and the Child Health Project. It consists of a weekly uh, intervention, home visits, one hour visits, structure, with structured activities and are age, uh, appropriate, age and developmentally appropriate for infants and toddlers. Um, each home visitors uh, visit up to uh, 14 uh, children and home visit, uh, the, home, the activities include playing games and um, uh, reading and parent-child interaction, singing and, and the songs and rhyming. So Jamaica has now, uh, this model has really implemented in 14, has been tested in 14 countries um, across the world. Um, but interestingly, 21 years or, or almost 30 years later, Jamaica's uh, Ministry of Health is implementing this program, having seen that it has been replicated in other places, and they are conducting a biweekly visit um, uh, uh, throughout uh, Jamaica. Um, so. The management of structure of the China Reach is, is a three tier, started at the county level with supervision and then a township level where the supervisors are located and there they, they train and oversee, oversee the home visitors. Um, supervisors are full-time staff in townships they, uh, they are uh, based in the health center um, of the, at the township level in the MCH uh, center, but they're not employees of the health system. Um, so therefore, this is a situation that uh, is a factor for staff turnover. Um, the supervisors can, uh, can receive about 12, have about 12 to 15 years of education, high school to junior college level, and home visitor nine to 12 years of education. And it's a cascade scale, a cascade model of training from the from the, the master supervisors uh, uh, to tr master trainers to the uh, township supervisor and the supervisors to the home visitors. 
Um, so on average, is one visitor um, serves about 14 families, 14 children, and um, they they um, are about one supervisor uh, tends to about eight home uh, eight visitors, home visitors, and each week the home the supervisor meet with the, uh, the home visitor to go over the what they have done, what are the questions, and also they prepare toys together. So the the strength of this um, the training. Oh, I should. Strains of the training uh, for the China Reach, which is based on the Jamaica uh, curriculum, is very strong. It's structured. It's pres prescribed you know, with according to the age of the week of the child. Um, it's facilitated to. Uh, uh, it, it really facilitates a low level of education of the home visitors, and also very diverse uh, background with by different background. The weakness is that adaptation. You know, even though it's done, but then it's very limited um, uh, to changing the pictures in terms of the clothing, change, adjusting, uh, uh, re, uh, translating language, where uh, now it, the program, the, the project is in Tibet and also in Xinjiang on the border of um, Kazakhstan. So, so those two places, uh, it, it's been changed, uh, translated to their own local languages. The duration of the training uh, varies. Um, the, for the supervisors, about seven to uh, eight days, and for the home visitors, it's about eight uh, uh, to 10 days. So now we, we talk about Brazil. Brazil is a national home visiting program, the Criança Feliz. Uh, it was launched in 2016 um, uh, f following the legal framework that was um, uh, for ECD. So CF has expanded uh, uh, tremendously over covering about 70% of municipalities um, that are eligible. and the beneficiaries are recipients of the Bolsa Familia, which is a conditional cash transfer. It's the largest one in the world um, that, uh, that provides, uh, that combats hunger and uh, improving health and education. So the, home, the Criança Feliz focuses on pregnant women, children under the three years of age, and children with disabilities under six years of age. Um, the scaling up has been a tremendous. Right now, it has reached about 0.8. Actually, uh, Ellie will talk uh, even more, uh, almost 0.9 million um, uh, uh, children and pregnant women. Uh, and then the, the structure, it is the, the program was initially based in the um, Ministry of Social Development and was therefore able to leverage the Brazil's entire social assistance infrastructure. And right now it is, it is uh, housed in the Ministry of Citizenship. Um, and then the implementation, actually, it follows very much a decentralized uh, uh, structure of Brazil's, uh, bureau, uh, bu uh, Brazil's bureaucracy and administrative administration. State and municipalities have autonomy to opt in or out of the program and, and have a discretion to hire and, uh, uh, and also pay the salary uh, and then adjust the salaries of the staff. Um, so the content is based on, of the, the Brazil's the Care for Child Development is based on uh, the, the WHO and UNICEF Care for Child Development manual, and there's a home visiting guide that is tailored, uh, uh, developed, adapted by the Ministry of Citizenship. The material emphasizes practicality and also highlights measures to tailor to local conditions. They, they stress the importance of understanding young children's emotions, uh, abilities, skills, and other aspects of whole child development. The program very much focused on early attachment. And, this, and, this, and the, the CCD program is also it's a set of age developmentally appropriate recommendations for, for uh, play and communication. It promotes very much kind of, you know, highlights, help uh, uh, caregivers uh, guide uh, uh, families in adopting responsive interactions uh, with children, promote strong emotional bonds, and also um, and enable family to stimulate their children. Um, the strengths of the CCD um, uh, curriculum are fourfold. It is the content is simple. Uh, it can be easily adapted uh, to rural and, and the local customs. It can um, it taps local learning uh, uh, resources and creates creates uh, games and activities and associated with local children's uh, lives. And they emphasize local culture and encourage children to learn in accordance to their local customs. Um, the, the training, again, uh, here, um, uh, it is a cascade level uh, uh, style, but um, the supervisor have tertiary level education. Home visitor are middle or high school uh, level education, um, and uh, they 
after they have been selected, the supervisor and the home visitor receive two weeks, 80 hours of pre-services training on the conduct and the content of home visits. So, uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, it's a cascade starting from the municipal uh, state level with, um, with multipliers and multipliers at state level train supervisors and supervisors train um, the home visitors. The, the, in contrasting both programs, the curriculum for the China Reach is very much carefully developed and articulated. It focuses primarily on promotion of child development. Children are enrolled uh, from uh, between six to 24 uh, months, and replication is very much based on the Jamaica model uh, and contextualized to the to meet local needs, but then is limited uh, uh, with except, except for to the translation and adaptation on the illustrations. The activities are structured age appropriate, easy to administer um, around the specific activity, the toys that are being made uh, by the home visitors. So demonstrate, so the home visitor demonstrates to the, the uh, on the practices um, to the primary caregivers and the primary giver um, and are asked to repeat those activities. Training therefore is top down, um, the cascade model. Uh, and, and it is very suitable to, to the home visitor with very varied and low level of education. Um, the, the program uh, for um, Brazil, it, it is more of a holistic, whole child approach, uh, but it links the services to a rate of um, uh, health, education, social protection service, therefore enabling early, early uh, referral uh, for the families. And it begins in pregnancy, uh, links the, uh, with a family, uh, links begin pregnancy, uh, links uh, to municipal social services, support mother's health, including mental health, and, um, and also special needs of children. Children with disabilities are served up to um, uh, six years of uh, age. So the model is suitable for rapid expansion as it has a building flexibility to allow supervisors and home visitors to adapt and tailor. So the, um, the curriculum, uh, also, uh, it is simple to use. Um, it is focused primarily on caregiver interaction uh, by, you know, uh, with children by talking uh, with caregivers, by showing them how to play, and by inqu inquiring about uh, family concerns. So CCD is a really a good start for national uh, HV uh, program, but it's not sufficient. Many of the home visitors now are asking, now what? Um, so ongoing training will be crucial. Um, I won't elaborate here because um, uh, um, Ellie will talk much more in detail. So the issues and challenges of the, on the, the two programs they're facing as it relates to primarily to development the quality of ECD workforce, scaling up of HV uh, intervention without uh, losing the, their essential focus and assuring sustainable uh, funding and support. On um, workforce development, so how, do, how does home visitors acquire capacity to work with families with multiple stress, uh, stressors and risk factors? And how do systems ensure um, the sufficient and well-trained workforce is available to work with families? How does one quickly build a qualified workforce uh, that can, um, can relatively use simple um, curricula but adapt to local um, uh, context and needs? Brazil um, uh, is a flexible model, allows implementers room to make adaptations. Brazil is setting up a permanent education system, which Ellie uh, will talk about. Um, China the REACH has a limited flexibility for contextualizing to local needs and attending to multiple risk um, uh, uh, families, uh, such as maternal depression and grand uh, grandparents, whose primary concern are still focused on survival. Um, and China needs also to focus strongly on the fidelity transfer of skills and knowledge from the program designer uh, from Jamaica and now to local trainers, to supervisors, to home visitors. A second point, on maintaining focus. Um, are we ready to take home visitors to scale, intervention to scale? Do we lose the focus on interactions, caregiver-child interactions, home visitor, parent, uh, uh, supervisor, home visitors, um, as we push to get a uh, 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 task done? Um, uh, nurturing care is about relationships, as John uh, underscored uh, in the intro. And it applies not only to relationships between caregiver and children, but also how home visitors relate to, um, to 
to moms, grandmothers, um, and how they supervisors treat home visitors. And um, and then and what and then what is the essential ingredient of home visiting that we uh, don't want to compromise? Um, lastly, on sustaining funding, um, how do we best gain sustainability and funding and support? Brazil has achieved sustainable funding through uh, po um, political leadership, commitment commitment to uh, Criança Feliz, legislation, uh, linkage with very successful um, Bolsa Familia, the conditional cash transfer uh, fund uh, program. China Reach has replicated to nine provinces, but remain an experimental project, um, dependent on donor funding, um, central directive. In, the quest, in this quest to show evidence to policymakers using a weekly home vi uh, visiting model, CDRF has uh, not um, uh, compared uh, alternatives such as group Bay, such as um, uh, bi-weekly um, home visiting program. So, or have taken an earnest uh, look on what, um, uh, what works under what circumstances, and given the size of China and its var uh, varied um, cultural and ethnic dimensions. So without consideration of comparative models, it will be very difficult to, uh, to establish a solid evidence of effectiveness needed to back up requests for a stable, expanded funding. So thank you very much. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for this opportunity to learn with you. And thanks, Mary, for making this presentation. Almost you, you showed almost everything. But let me <laughs> let me try to make uh, some appointments. Um, we have, uh, you have to forgive, I hope you can understand my English. If you don't, please don't raise your hands. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me uh, say a note about this. We have a political contest that made us go to scale in such a short time. We had this big mobilization of the whole society to have this legal framework for early childhood. It was really interesting, led by Osmar Terra. He was a federal deputy in the Congress. And we had, in a very record timing, we had this legal framework approved, and in March, uh, of 2018, and in May, the president and it became a law, and in May, our president was impeached. And then, um, our uh, Osmar Terra the mini uh, became, he was invited for the transition government to be a minister of the social development, and that was an opportunity. So in four months, he launched Criança Feliz program. And we had no time uh, to be a pilot. He, it, it, um, it was a, a evidence-based program, an initiative, but we had no time to pilots, so we had to go to scale. We have only 18 months to put the program in the country and to have some chance to be sustainable to go to the other. I don't know if this happened in, in your country, but in Brazil, when governor cha government changes, sometimes even the good experiences, good policies don't exist anymore. So, we, we had... Okay, okay. So we have to run. Uh, uh, we didn't have so much time to do everything to put this uh, program in the cities. And so, 
we uh, we had in the same ministry both a familiar program and a, a big cash um, transfer program that we has uh, about uh, 42 million beneficiaries. And so we were together, we are together with this to try to, to attend this, the most vulnerable families in the country in the Bolsa Familia program. So the goals are to promote integral child development, to support the pregnant woman in the preparation for the birth and the perinatal care, to mediate access to public policies and services, and to support and mentor families with children from zero to six years old by providing tools for parents to stimulate their children's cognitive, emotional, and psychosocial development. So we have two big components of the program. The home visiting to support the families to be for parenting and to make the bridge between the, the, these families' needs and the services. And these are all supported, referenced in the center of social assistance uh, in the country. We have all these centers in all, all the cities, all the municipalities of the country. So the target audience are pregnant women, children up to three years old from the Bolsa Familia program, and children up to six years old with the disabilities, beneficiaries of a BPC program uh, for disabled children. And we are now starting to uh, work with the children up to six years old that are not living with their families in foster care and we in foster families. So as, uh, as uh, Mary presented before, we have 5,570 municipalities in the country and we have the green ones and the yellow ones uh, are the eligible municipalities and we had till now um, well every week we have changing the numbers but we have almost 2,900 municipalities adhered in a voluntary basis and we have already 900,000 beneficiaries with children and pregnant women and since July uh, 2019, we have done 26 million to, I, I can't say the numbers, <laughs> over than 26 million visits since the beginning was two, two years ago. And this is thanks to 23,000 workers and home visitors and supervisors in all these almost 3,000 municipalities. So, the objectives of the home visit in the Criança Feliz is to support families to identify the quality of this relationship that was the John was talking about uh, guide the family on activities that uh, and care that strengthen this bond, the attachment, and inform the family about their rights and the importance of the play, how to play to stimulate their development, and identify the needs for access to so social services and rights. So, as Mary said before, we are using care for child development, and, and uh, we uh, 
respect and try to uh, value the protagonist of the family, the respect, the culture of the family, and try to listen what are the family needs are and focus on attachment. And we have a very open curriculum. This is not so easy because we are working with, uh, with, uh, let's see, we are working with high uh, school level home visitors, and despite we have the supervisors, they are college graduated, but um, working with almost 25,000 workers hired by the municipalities, not by us, it's not so easy. So, and, and we have adopted the Cascade model of training, so we have a national team of trainers and they train the state multipliers. They are not our partners, in very important partners. That's uh, the state multipliers train the municipal supervisors and the home visitors. So we have initial training, 80 hours. Uh, and then we are building this permanent education process with uh, some online courses, face-to-face -face meetings, and thematic notebooks uh, with specific uh, um, issues or uh, contents uh, that comes to their needs, the, uh, the home visitors' needs. So the initial formation is 80 hours, how to go, what is, what, uh, a home visit is how to uh, go and to to start the relationship with the families and um, the care for child development other 40 hours so we have auto instructive lessons online uh, in an online base and face-to-face -face workshops and this is an example there are some courses in a platform, and they are individually evaluated. It, every and the first group we had already uh, more, more than two thousand home visitors attending to the courses, and we are making all these courses in modules, twenty hours each course and all the evaluation, so we are running, and we have many, to do this, we have many partners, governmental, we have the all the other mini social ministries in the social area to help us with the contents, and other, all federal universities helping us with the uh, impact evaluation, and um, some legislator from the front of uh, uh, the parliamentary front for early childhood and the, the justice system too. And so we have sp some uh, other partners from the UN system and from private sector that help us to give contents and, uh, and and some, for instance, Itaú Social, uh, let me see, Itaú Social, it's a bank, they, were, they have a foundation, they gave more than two million li uh, books for all the children uh, in the program, visited in the program. And we have a special partner too, it's the National Association of, of Private Universities, and they develop an ACD discipline for undergraduate courses. And in Brazil, 85% of the colleges are run by the private sector. So 
they have 247 associated universities, almost 3 million students, and so they are helping us to uh, train the future professional workers that will work with us. Um, so we have this pleasure last year uh, to be one of the uh, awardees in the WISE winner. We, this is the, our minister in Doha last year, and we received um, this prize to be being one of the largest education awards in the world. So. <laughs> Obrigada. Oi, Kevin. A dona Rosilene, ela dedica mesmo a esse templo para os filhos dela. Eu acompanho o Bernard do BPC, né? Eu acho muito legal o interesse dela nas atividades e deles saberem a importância dessas atividades para o desenvolvimento dos filhos deles. Isso é muito legal, por criança feliz. Dizer o que é bom, o que é certo. Né? Principalmente ela, ela explica muito o que é bom para eles, né? Como fazer as coisas. Então eu acho que isso é muito bom. Eu achei legal porque é a única pessoa que me indica eles, sabe? Porque tem tantos projetos. Ninguém vem visitar ele. Fazer o um exercício com ele. Hoje em dia ele consegue ficar de bronço na cama. Às vezes ele já consegue. Quando a gente vê, ele já tá quase descendo da cama, porque ele não conseguia. Eu vi que dando mais atenção para ele, ele vai melhorar muito mais, sabe? É, ter uma infância adequada, se desenvolver de acordo com a sua faixa etária e possa ter uma vida adulta mais tranquila, é passando longe desses riscos, dessas situações de violência que nós encontramos nessas áreas. O Criança Feliz, ele acaba sendo um pontapé para isso. Very much. Hello. 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 Okay. <laughs> oh yes, there's the echo. People say, "Oh, there's an echo up there." Now I know you can hear me. So. I have the privilege of responding to those rich and interesting presentations that take us around the world and make us think more broadly about home visiting and how, how it can be used in, in more places. And I'm representing, not me really, but CUPID, the Collaborative for Understanding the Pedagogy of Infant-Toddler Development. I'll tell you a little bit more about them in a minute, but um, I just want to sort of highlight, Brazil's aiming to provide home visits to three million families in a short period of time. So how do we compare? Let's just compare. <laughs> um, the largest estimate that I've read is two million. We might be serving two million families in the United States. And this pie chart gives you an idea of where where um, your favorite funding source fits in. <laughs> um, McVie is the light green slice and early Head Start funded through the Administration for Children and Families is the dark green slice. The orange slice are other evidence-based home visiting programs. Then we have early intervention, part C. They're delivering services through home visiting using the same practices, the same principles that we use. And then we have other, that's the blue. Most home visiting that is happening is not represented here. Well, it might be, we don't know, it's other. Um, 
So, but there's a lot of, that comes from asking families, do you get home visits? And some of them, it might be just a, like a short-term uh, postnatal uh, maternal health nurse that comes by just a few times, um, not really a program. But for them, that's home visiting and that's what's helping them. So um, just want to keep everything in perspective there. Um, it, it also may include that blue part, infant mental health programs that are coming out of departments of, uh, well, family services, protective services, different kinds of departments, um, and other state and local programs that are simply just not identified as an evidence-based home visit and are not funded for early intervention. So a lot's going on out there that we don't know that much about. Or I don't, you might. Um, so how can a country build a strong workforce? In Brazil, they've mobilized these partnerships with universities, 247 universities. I thought, wow, do we have 247 universities in the United States? I think so. Could we build partnerships with all of them to support the home visiting workforce? Well, we could start, um, but we, we don't have a very good start from what I can tell, <laughs> not that many. Um, in China, well, both in China and Brazil, using this cascade of training, training trainers, trainers, train trainers, um, and then those trained trainers train home visitors, and then those home visitors train parents. Um, so by the time it gets there, is it, is it still the same message, or is it like playing that game where you whisper to each person around the circle, and by the time it gets out, um, that's what makes the game funny? because um, it doesn't usually turn out the same, but we're hoping that, you know, it, it is working. The home visitors are getting this information at the end of that cascade, and families are getting that information at the far end of that cascade. In the United States, one of the ways that we're um, encouraging a workforce is to require, have requirements for home visitors in our evidence-based models, in program performance standards, in system regulations, and we've identified a lot of, actually, multiple overlapping, often aligned sets of competencies. Um, at the university level, there are some home visiting courses, home visiting certificates. Um, I've listed some of those universities because those are the ones I know, because those are the people I talk to. So I'm teaching a home visiting course. <laughs> Gina Cook is teaching a home visiting course at Cal State uh, Stanislaus. Callie Decker's teaching one at Montana State. Um, Western Kentucky has a certificate program. University of Maryland, Baltimore County has a, a training system that they're developing. Um, so it's not like it's not out there, and I know there are more I don't know about. But um, what we've learned is that um, oh, we have the family life education certification work that is looking at this certification that has existed for a long time and seems to be comprehensive and, and hitting on many of the things we want for home visitors. And those are existing in uh, universities that are, have human development family studies departments that are usually have a history of being the land grant institutions that also have good agriculture and engineering departments. Um, but most of our work is included in other courses. So maybe in a child development course, maybe in a social work course, maybe in a nursing course. Somebody talks about home visiting and then they move on to something else. And it, um, graduates aren't necessarily coming out with a broad foundation in that. But we've been developing competencies. There's several of them, including for Piccolo. I did want to stop and say what CUPID stands for. It's the Collaborative for Understanding the Pedagogy of Infant Toddler Development. We don't find you your next hot date, but we do. Um, so think about the little flying, chubby, happy baby instead. But we're faculty members who do research on infant toddler development and then also teach infant toddler development. And we were noticing that what we were seeing in the research, like the exciting stuff, we really want every, every person working with infants and toddlers and their families to know about, that wasn't necessarily in the textbooks that, ha that were available to us. And we wanted to bring those into alignment. So we've been studying students who are gonna be in the future workforce, and we've been developing competencies and then research resources to support those. These are the competencies. 
These aren't for home visitors necessarily. These are for everyone who works in the infant toddler workforce. So we had to think about how well do these fit for home visitors. And in fact, we started out with just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H on that list. And then when we started thinking about home visitors, it became really clear that we needed to think about mentoring and supporting competencies in adults. And this is what the competency looks like. Because home visitors have the responsibility not just of knowing about infants and toddlers, but for knowing how to build a working relationship with another adult to mentor them, to coach them, to teach them, to help them support their child's development and improve their family's well-being. And of course, then once we thought about that, we thought, well, that actually goes on in the whole infant-toddler workforce, where adults are supporting each other like that. So we can expand those skills to those situations as well. And there are, of course, a lot of related competencies that are similar, and we have looked at the alignment there. Um, these are the three recommendations Cupid came up with when they started looking at home visiting um, preparation. And we we're recommending that we really need multidisciplinary training. When we have someone who comes out of a single discipline and that's what they know, then there's this whole other missing stuff they have to learn. And it actually doesn't really matter which discipline it was. It never seems like quite enough when they hit the job of being a home visiting, a home visitor. We also want cross-sector training where we have people coming together from different disciplines so that they can share ideas. And finally, a ton more practical experience seeing home visits and practicing home visiting strategies before we're sending them out to work with families. There's a lot of ways to do that. People who were talking about workforce development this morning and some of those university systems um, and the research on the workforce referred to uh, several things that would help the workforce. So what do we need? We need more in-service training. We're not getting people prepared right out of school in something that makes them ready. Um, we have pre-service training that tends to be model focused generally. We need more in-service training on these competencies, more skills training that's not specific to models or funding, more online resources for isolated areas and more research on practices that work, more experiential learning, more shared training across models and systems, and generally more collaboration. So, the other thing is we could focus on what we're good at. These are the outcomes from the My Hope study. This is what we've been able to do. So it's a place to put our energy and our focus. 18 visits in eight to 12 months is what people are getting. Maybe we need to be designing ways to get that done in a shorter period of time. 50% of home visitors have less than three years experience. I heard someone say today, it takes three years experience to get good at this. So, wait a minute, <laughs> we're losing them all too fast. Um, and we know about the problem of turnover. So, just quickly, one of my favorite pictures, somebody gave it to me when I visited Brazil. I like it that it's a guy, I like it that it's outdoors, I like it that they're doing something a family's gonna keep doing over and over and over and over again. So whatever they can use that activity for, they're gonna have lots of opportunities. So here's some points I wanna make and then I'm done. Qualified is not the same as effective. We have qualifications for hiring people, they're not yet ready to go. Um, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of support and a lot of professional development. Fidelity is not the same as quality. We have evidence-based models. We want to make sure they're implemented to fidelity. It's not the same as quality. Quality requires individualization to each family. Evidence-based is not the same as universally applicable. We need to be able to adapt models, even if they're evidence-based, to each community and to each family. And so we need to develop and find, we need to find resources to be able to combine our efforts and collaborate to find better, develop better systems for preparing a workforce in a more integrated way that can be effective across models and communities and cultures and countries um, so that we can work together more effectively. Thank you.
All right. Uh, we have a few minutes left that we can um, uh, leave for questions. And um, there was one question that came through the app that I think is, uh, I wanted to share and ask um, our panel to think about. And none of us are economists, but let's talk about pay for a minute. <laughs> Lori is walking away from the stage. Um, <laughs> how were, um, is the salary competitive compared to jobs requiring similar education in, um, from what you know, for uh, Crianza Feliz and for uh, China Reach? And in China Reach, you said they were contractors, right? So they're not actual employees. But what does the, what does, how does their, um, how does their salary compare to other similar positions? For, for China Reach, yeah, it's comparable. So that you know, the family almost kind of consider that you know, having um, to go uh, to a city to work for the mother, you know, the, the amount of salary she's getting is almost equivalent to if she could have stayed home. So it is kind of competitive or in a way it's attractive for her to use that as an option for, for her employment, yeah. Well, in Brazil, the salaries of the home visitors are very, very low, but the other salaries are low too. Yeah. So, and they are hired by the municipality that have the the po po police policy mm -hmm. for that. So, it depends on the if you are in close to the big cities, the the salaries are higher, but um, they are. They are respecting the, the policy, the local policy. This is an issue for us because they are hiring and uh, we don't have any, at the federal level, we don't have any... Uh, say. Anything to say. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, because right now, because you're doing such a rapid expansion, how are they recruiting home visitors or does the, do you at the federal level even, do you even know the answer to that or is it all happening locally? Well, we have all this description, job description in, in the legislation. Uh, the, the program was created in a presidential decree mm -hmm. and so we have all this description but it doesn't guarantee that uh, the municipality is hiring with the, all this, this, what is, uh, is written in the law. Yeah. yeah. That's why we, we think the solution is to invest in permanent education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the way we can bring the quality of, for the service. So the, fe so the federal, the ministry is investing in the permanent, the kind of basically professional development in education. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, are in there my country, oh, yeah. we're not doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking to you to see if you had any um, like <laughs> deep insights yeah, into the issue of, yeah. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? I'm going to stand here. Hello. Yes, oh, thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Hashina Webster, and I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, and we are using the Healthy Families of America model with home visiting. And what I wanted to ask is for the other countries, I noticed there was nothing about fathers. Are fathers treated differently in other countries? Are there no home visiting for fathers? Do you hire men for home visiting? That's my question. Yeah, <laughs> fathers. No. Fathers, right? Yeah, the yeah. The question is, do you? For, there's two questions, really. One is, do you do you have any men hired as home visitors, which happens some in the United States, but it's still fairly rare. 
And then how do your program models think about involving fathers in the home visits, which also is happening more frequently in the US, but it's still pretty rare. Yes. Uh, we have uh, home visitors, uh, men home visitors. Uh, there are few, very few, and we have, uh, actually we are working on a partnership with uh, uh, an NGO in, in Brazil that works with this, uh, the importance of the, the father in the family and the, the children's development uh to to produce some contents and we have some stories very nice stories about uh the relationship we, between the children and uh, the fathers this is a very very important issue for us too in china um the for men um, it can be at the supervisor or mainly at coordinator level not so uh, not uh, uh, yet um, for as home visitors do you for the uh, china reach home visits how often would you say are fathers often or grandfathers engaged grandfathers in home visits are, yes grandfathers are very engaged but then they would not know um, you know how to interact but then you know once once they observe when the home visitors comes in they actually are very very uh, active because they spend most of the time caring like caring you know piggybacking the child to the field and spending more time as as most of these children or majority I'm not sure the majority but at least about 50%, depending on uh, places, these children are left behind. Their parents have uh, moved to the cities um, for labor, and then therefore our grandparents who are caring for, uh, for, for, the, for, the, for the grandchildren. So yes, so the grandparents' uh, father play a very active role. Hello. Hi. I was just interested more on the evaluation in, that's taking place in Brazil and in China with the programs, and if you've started to see like different municipalities having different outcomes and how that's getting processed into you know future permanent education for home visitors. Yeah. Well, that's a very good question. I think China um, uh, started with one um, um, uh, RCT um, that uh, the results came out um, uh, positive in children's language development in their uh, an actual um, de development do uh, domains, and uh, um, so has been replicated in others, um, but not so much in a way of guiding uh, on the very specific implementation issues. How can we do better, or what are the areas in terms of you know. Uh, uh, relationship that can be can be uh, tight, you know, improved. That area is still not uh, being done, but it's very much kind of impact evaluation of you know intervention, the results, and uh, um, how and has been um, uh, very positive. Is there an evaluation plan for Crianza Feliz? Yes, uh, uh, the impact evaluation was designed since the beginning of the program. And it's run by a very uh, no epidemiologist and a Brazilian. In uh, we have six federal universities involved in the process, and we have the evaluation just finished the baseline in 30 municipalities in six states. That means. Um, more than 3,000 kids will be followed in the next three years. So this is a very huge <laughs> research, but the, the, the baseline will be presented next week ah. in, in Brazil, yes. And then some of the impact um, findings will be released in three years? Uh, yes, years. we will have three uh, measuring uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first measuring was just finished, and the probability by the end of the year we will have the the first results. Okay. And uh, uh, we are also hiring uh, qualitative um, measurings about the implementation because we are here 
responsible for running the program. We don't have this time to wait for the big evaluation, impact evaluation. So we are using qualitative uh, methods to 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 bring or to correct the, the, the failures of the implementation process too. Because it, it seems to me that you have, it's in how many communities? Two, uh, 3,000? How many communities is Crianza Feliz in right now? Communities, we are working No, just with not for evaluation, just in 30, general. 30 municipalities, okay. that means over the 3,000 kids. Yeah, so you have the opportunity to uh, you could think of each of those municipalities as kind of like a small test, right? And it'd be interesting to think about the evaluation activities you could do to figure out all of the local variation, like all the way the program, because of the great flexibility in China, in, sorry, uh, Crianza Feliz, it just seems like a unique opportunity to look at the different ways it might play out. Yes, we are using the ASQ3 mm -hmm. test to measure the, um, the development of the children. Yeah. But it is, it's in a way, I think it was by lottery, right? You know, how yes. the selection, so it was it's a very well designed methodology. Mm -hmm. um, they did not do just um, at the baseline already, the, uh, in terms of uh, maternal depression uh, was very high, it was 27%. So in that, I think provided a lot of information to feed back into how do we then pr uh, develop training material to support home visitors to, to. So I think that that aspect, I mean, this rolling, uh, providing the information, uh, collecting data, and feeding into the program, that is a very unique uh, uh, feature of, of the Crianza Feliz. Excellent. Well, we are out of time, so please, once again, uh, thank, uh, join me in thanking our presenters. <laughs> <laughs>